Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Problem number 44, Gauss Law Chapter 23. Uh, I'll read out the question. Problem uh, figure 53, 52 rather. Figure 52 gives the magnitude of electric field inside and outside a sphere with a positive charge distribution uniformly throughout its volume. So this is the graph. The scale of, uh, of the vertical axis is said by ES is equal to 5.0 into 10 to the power 7 Newton per coulomb. I have written that here. Uh, what is the charge on the sphere? What is the charge on the sphere? So we have a charged uh, sphere, uniformly charged sphere. Uh, this is the graph showing variation of the electric field inside as well as outside. So there is some portion in this graph which is for the inside. Uh, in, uh, like which shows the variation of electric field inside the sphere and then there is some portion in it which shows the variation of electric field outside the sphere uh, outside the sphere maybe some of you already have that idea uh, we'll just figure that out okay we'll just figure that out I'll first find out uh, electric field inside the sphere and electric field outside the sphere and then we will exactly uh, target the question okay target the problem so uh, before that, uh, if we have a charge uniformly charged sphere, uh, okay. So we have a uniformly charged sphere with some uniform positive charge. By the way, this has to be a non-conducting sphere. If it were a conducting sphere, all the charge because of the mutual repulsion would go to the surface. So it has to be a non-conducting uh, sphere. Say its charge is Q and radius is R, uh, what about the charge density then? Okay, what about the charge? Since it is uniformly charged, so charge density rho is total charge divided by total volume. Now volume of the sphere is 4 by 3 pi R cube. 4 by 3 pi R cube. So 3 will come upstairs, so this is 3 Q divided by 4 pi R cube. We'll need this later on. So charge, total charge of the sphere is Q, radius of the sphere is R, charge density, charge per unit volume is 3Q divided by 4 pi R cube. Now uh, I'll find out electric field first inside the sphere, inside the sphere. So this is a charged sphere with charge Q and radius R. I have considered a Gaussian sphere there. Okay, Gaussian surface, which is spherical. So this here is a Gaussian surface, which is a sphere of say radius r. Okay, radius r. Uh, we'll use Gauss law for this. Uh, Gauss law, we, you must be already aware of, is integral e dot dA is equal to q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. Okay, q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. On the left hand side, we have to solve the integral, integral e dot dA. On, on the right hand side, we have to find out first the charge enclosed. Now, regarding the electric field, which is which we can simply consider by, consider by the symmetry of the problem. Since spherical symmetry is involved, there is only one way out that electric field has to be radial. Electric field has to be radial here like this, at this point 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 like this. There is no way out. There is no other way. Okay, there is no other way. This is a spherical symmetry. So field has to be radial. Okay, field has to be radial. Uh, again, by the symmetry, we can say that field magnitude, okay, magnitude, not the direction, magnitude at all the points of this Gaussian surface must be same in magnitude, just by spherical symmetry, okay, just by spherical symmetry, we are able to say that electric field magnitude at all these points of the Gaussian sphere, here, 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 at this point, 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 at all these points on the Gaussian sphere, magnitude of the electric field will be same and direction is radially outward then direction of area okay direction of area now direction of area is taken along the normal which for a curved surface is the radial direction if it is a closed surface then by uh, convention we take it radially outward so if i choose an area element here its direction is radially outward this way 
which is same as the direction of electric field. If the area element is here, direction of area is again radially outward, which is again same as the direction of electric field. If the element area element is here, direction of area is radially outward, which is again same as that of the electric field. So at all the points, at all the points of the Gaussian sphere, electric field and area are in the same direction. Okay, electric field and area are in the same direction. So theta involved angle between the two involved is zero degrees at all points okay now the, the right hand side right hand side we have q enclosed charge enclosed now charge enclosed by the gaussian sphere is charge lying in this volume which is a spherical volume of radius little r so charge enclosed charge enclosed is charge density into volume okay charge density into volume volume is 4 by 3 pi little r cube uh, radius of the gaussian sphere is little r so 4 by 3 little r cube 4 by 3 pi little r, little r cube so this is charge enclosed okay this is charge enclosed so uh, let's follow this uh, integral now so we have integration of e dot dA, I'll write as e dA cos of theta is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon zero. Okay, Q enclosed divided by epsilon zero. Uh, so this implies, now E is the magnitude of the electric field, which we already argued that is same at all points on the surface, Gaussian surface, not inside or outside. What is electric field inside? We don't know. What is electric field outside? Is it same or not? We don't care about that in this integral. All we care about in this integral is electric field at different points of the Gaussian surface. What is electric field inside it? We don't care. What is electric field outside it? We don't care. Okay, in this integral. So uh, electric field is same at all the points on this uh, on the uh, on different points of this Gaussian sphere. So E is constant in this integral comes out cos of theta is 0 so cos of 0 comes out integration of dA is A which in this case is 4 pi r square which is total area surface area of the Gaussian sphere. Our sphere has an area of 4 pi r square little r square. Then Q enclosed rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube okay rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube. Uh, rho divide by epsilon 0 I'll write here 4 by 3 pi little r cube this is equal to here okay this is equal to. so this is left hand side this is the right hand side so let's see what cancels out uh, 4 and pi 4 and pi r square r square cos of 0 is 1 so this implies e is equal to rho divided by 3 epsilon 0 into little r one of the r's remains there so rho by 3 epsilon 0 little r that would mean field inside the sphere field inside the sphere is directly proportional to r okay is directly proportional to r now if you want to put this result in terms of the total charge we can do that we already know total charge can be written here as no rho instead of rho we will write 3q divided by uh, 4 pi capital r cube so this implies E is equal to 1 by 3 epsilon 0. Instead of rho, we'll write 3q divided by 4 pi capital R cube. Then this little r is there. So this implies E is equal to, now 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 is electrostatic constant, which I represent by gamma. 3 and 3 cancels out here. So we're left with q divided by capital R cube into this little r. So gamma cube by capital R cube into little r. This is in terms of total charge of the sphere and this is in terms of charge density of the sphere. Both of them are equally correct. El electric field inside is directly proportional to r. Okay, is directly proportional to r. On the surface, on the surface, uh, for the surface we just have to replace uh, little r by the capital R because for any point on the surface distance from the center is capital R. So instead of small r, little r will write down capital R. So, so I'll rewrite it. Field inside is equal to rho by 3 epsilon 0 r 
which is equal to gamma q divided by r cube into little r. Remember, it is directly proportional to r. Okay, e inside is directly proportional to r. It is a linear function of radial distance r. Then uh, on the surface, for the surface, which simply means little r is equal to capital R, e surface is equal to gamma q divided by one of the r's will get cancelled out so we'll have r square capital r square gamma q divided by capital r square so inside outside inside field is directly proportional to r that's important bit for us directly proportional to r means linear function so you have this uh, straight line curve through the origin okay straight line curve through the origin let's see what's field outside uh, outside the sphere okay outside the sphere Again, I have uh, drawn the sphere with charge Q radius capital R. And I have drawn this Gaussian sphere, concentric Gaussian sphere with radius small r. Okay, with radius small r. Again, by symmetry of the problem, uh, we can easily say that field is radially outward. Spherical symmetry is involved, so field has to be radially outward at this point here and so on at all other points right really outward and direction of area direction of area we already know is normal to the surface for a curved surface it is along the radius for a closed surface it is outward normal so outward radius so if i choose an area element here direction of area is radially outward da here if i choose an area element here direction of area is radially outward if I choose an element here, direction of area is radially outward here. If I choose an element here, direction of radi uh, area is radially outward like this. At all these points, you see that uh, field and area are in the same direction. Okay, exactly what we did for inside. Then again, from the symmetry of the spherical symmetry involved, we can say field at all points of this Gaussian surface is same in magnitude. Is same in magnitude. Again, the same thing what we did on the uh, inside part. So that would mean nothing changes on the left hand side. Nothing changes on the left hand side. Integral E dot dA remains the same. Then uh, this thing remains the same. 4 pi R square remains the same. The only difference is this R is now greater than the capital R. Here it was less than the capital R because it was lying inside the sphere. Now it is outside the, uh, outside the sphere. So outside the sphere, so little r is greater than the capital R, what would be only up to this point. So left hand side remains the same. Again, Gauss law. Outside. Integral E dA cos of theta is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon 0. So left hand side remains the same, which means I'll I can directly write E into cos of 0 into 4 pi r square. Now the right hand side, right hand side we need Q enclosed, charge which is lying inside the Gaussian surface, well all of the charge is lying inside the Gaussian sphere, this is the Gaussian sphere, all of the charge is lying inside it. So that means Q enclosed is simply capital Q, okay, Q enclosed is capital Q. So left hand side I'll directly write E cos of 0 is 1, no need to write that, 4 pi little r square is equal to Q enclosed is capital Q divided by epsilon 0. So this implies E is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r square. 4 pi r square goes downstairs. Or I can write E is equal to gamma Q divided by r square. 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 gamma. Electrostatic constant. Gamma Q divided by r square. Ah, this result looks familiar. Gamma Q divided by r square. It's same as that of a point charge. Okay, it's same as that of a point charge. So field outside is equal to gamma Q divided by R square is inversely proportional to square of the distance. Meaning that this sphere, this charged sphere for points lying outside the sphere behaves like a point charge. That's why we were having the same result as that of a point charge. So for all the points lying outside the sphere, okay, for all the points lying outside the sphere, sphere behaves like a point charge located at its center because r is from the center distance from the center located at its center 
So for points lying outside, field is inversely proportional to R square. For inside points, inside field was gamma Q divided by capital R cube into little r, which is directly proportional to R. Okay, directly proportional to R. And on the surface, field was gamma Q divided by capital R square. You can get the same result from here if you replace small r by the capital R. So gamma Q divided by capital R square, same thing. So inside field is directly proportional to R, outside field is inversely proportional to R square. That is why we are having this graph like this. Directly proportional, inversely proportional to R square. Oh, so meaning, this means, we have an important point here now. This means that this portion here, that this portion is the inside portion of the sphere and this portion is the outside portion of the sphere outside portion and this being the radius of the sphere surface of the sphere so uh, radius is equal to centimeters this must be in yeah this is in centimeters capital R is two centimeters and you can again see field is maximum at the surface okay? field is maximum at the surface so now we have foundation of this uh, uh, of this uh, sphere uniformly charged sphere now let's go back to the question question tells us from the graph we using the knowledge in the graph we had to find out charge on the sphere so capital Q what we consider charge of the sphere Q is what we have to find out okay so what I'll do is I'll consider this point of the sphere that means surface point. I know field on the surface 5.0 into 10 to the power 7. I know radius 2 centimeters and I already know what field is equal to on the surface gamma Q divided by capital R square. Now this value is given to us is uh, 5.0 into 10 to the power 7 Newton per coulomb. R we now found from the graph is 2 centimeters so we can find out Q. We can find out Q. So E on the surface is gamma Q divided by capital R square, which means capital Q is equal to ES, uh, ES divided by ESR square divided by gamma goes downstairs. Now let's substitute the values. ES is 5.0 into 10 to the power 7 in SI system R is 2 centimeters so I'll write 2 into 10 to the power minus 2 now it's in meters with the square divided by gamma is 9 into 10 to the power 9 so everything is in SI system okay everything is in SI system so this is what we have to work out I have already done that here so I'll directly write down the result this implies Q is equal to 2.2 into 10 to the power 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 6. Now we used everything in SI system. So what we get is also in SI system charge SI system uh, uh, unit of charge in SI system is Coulomb 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 6 Coulomb. Okay, so if you already knew the results of a solid sphere uniformly charged non-conducting sphere, you are just this much away from this problem. Uh, okay. So 2.2 into 10 to the power minus 6 coulombs. We'll be using the same results in uh, coming few problems. So that way this uh, problem, this session is important. That'll do for this session.